This week, the East Brunswick Friends of the Library will be giving away three pair of tickets for the Rolling Stones in concert in the New York City area. The tickets are prizes in a raffle now being conducted by the Friends. Tickets can be purchased at the audiovisual desk of the library or at the record setter, 742 Highway 18. Price is $1 each. The drawing will take place at the library on Thursday, November 5th at 6.30 p.m. and will be cable cast live here on Channel 8. Proceeds from fundraising by the Friends go to provide books, material, equipment, and special programs and services for the library. The East Brunswick Division of Recreation and the East Brunswick Social Runners are happy to announce the running of the 19th Annual Turkey Trot. The Turkey Trot welcomes participants ranging from kindergarten age children to senior citizens of East Brunswick. Come and enjoy a day of fun and races of varying distances according to school grades and ages. The Turkey Trot is held at the East Brunswick High School Football Stadium at 1 p.m. Sunday, November 15th. All first place finishers receive a turkey and a ribbon, while second and third place finishers receive ribbons. Bring the family and you may bring home a turkey. In case of rain or cancellation, the turkey trot will be held the following week, Sunday, November 22nd, same time, same place. Any cancellation will be announced over the radio station on WCTC. The Division of Recreation in East Brunswick is still accepting registrations for its Youth Basketball Instructional Program. The registration fee is $12 per child plus an additional $4 late fee for registering after the October 30th deadline. The program instructs the registrants in all basketball skills, dribbling, passing, shooting, team strategy, as well as the rules of the game. If there are any children interested in registering, registration fees may be brought or mailed to Division Headquarters. 334 Dunham's Corner Road, East Brunswick. Make checks payable to East Brunswick Township Recreation. This year's program will service all children in the fourth grade. This program is held strictly for East Brunswick residents. Thank you. This week, council discussion continued on the Route 18 Lawrence Brook Bridge realignment and the water surcharge issue. Also at issue were the plans for the routing of a gas pipeline through portions of East Brunswick. Mayor Fox addressed this topic. In response to our objection to the proposed New Jersey natural gas uh, pipeline, had uh, asked uh, that there be a meeting uh, chaired by the BPU staff uh, between township uh, staff and uh, New Jersey Natural Gas themselves in which they would attempt to mediate something. Uh, that meeting took place last Tuesday and I'd like to report to you uh, what occurred. Um, <clears throat> I guess I will give you uh, two impressions first. First impression is that uh, the Board of Public Utilities uh, as represented by their staff is very concerned about the objections uh, raised by the township and its residents uh, to the 
uh, proposed routing of the, of the gas line. Um, they are very sensitive to our concerns and uh, I think would like to accommodate them in whatever way uh, they can. Second impression is that they believe that the uh, provision of natural gas to the generating station uh, in Saratoga to the Jersey Central Power and Light Station is uh, positively in the public interest as they see their public responsibility. Um, staff pointed out that JCPNL customers have been uh, hit uh, with several steep rate increases as a result of, the, of their being part of the company that owns Three Mile Island um, and that the board believes it has a responsibility to provide rate relief to those customers uh, as in, in an urgent fashion. And indeed, their analysis says that the provision of natural gas, the placement of their oil-fired furnaces with natural gas firing would bring a, a significant rate reduction to the JCP and our customers. So on the one hand, they're sensitive to our needs. On the other hand, they are uh, sensitive to their need to do their public duty. Uh, we informed them that um, there was no routing through the middle of the township that, that would be acceptable. I think I uh, uh, reflect your position on this as uh, council members. Uh, that possibly a routing along the turnpike, even in the turnpike right of way, uh, might be acceptable and certainly a route that would take the line outside of these funds would be completely acceptable. Um, the BPU staff, and we, and, we, and we met with their executive director, uh, Mr. Zarillo, um, he was the person chairing the meeting, uh, directed New Jersey Natural Gas to uh, communicate with the Turnpike Authority to find out if there was any possibility of of locating the line in their right of way, uh, which would carry it uh, generally through unpopulated areas, uh, and also directed them to investigate the uh, routing that would carry it to the south of the township and then north uh, as it approached Sarah. Um, so I requested that the BPU have a hearing in East Brunswick uh, on this matter, and they agreed to do that. The meeting, will, the hearing will be, this will be a hearing uh, by the BPU commissioners, uh, not by anybody in East Brunswick. That is, we're invited to attend, but we're not running it. Um, we are providing the hall, in fact. The meeting will be November 11th at 8 p.m. Uh, in this room. And at that time, uh, the uh, board will have a hearing similar, I suppose, to the one that they had in Freehold Township um, to hear objections by the township um, and its residents uh, to uh, the proposal. Later, concerns about ingress and egress to private property on Route 18 were expressed. All right, thank you. Mr. Bush, as I understand it, if all ingress and egress is cut off from Route 18, he has to have ingress and egress from some other point. Yes. There would be no way that anyone could build a road or condemn property which would cut off a person entirely. <laughs> <laughs> they sometimes build interstates where you don't have the access you once had. You may have a service road, but you've got to have access. I, but I realize I have to have access, but, but at what point is the, will the plan show what that access might be? Well, it has to be within the boundaries of the road. Yeah, I think you're before the zoning board, yeah, right? Yeah. Well, you know, we have several steps to, to go with this and what we're looking at right now is, is a schematic schematic being lines on a piece of paper that says this is approximately how it will look detail engineering will bring maps all the stuff out i would just make two points all the maps all the schematics i've seen um, recently show access from the property to pat drive as it was shown oh, originally that was removed in, I didn't know uh, and secondly if there's a you know if there is a question of the loss of use of the commercial property, uh, since I believe, I don't know this for sure, but I imagine that some of 
your property that has to be taken in order for this to, to occur, it's a matter for condemnation proceedings uh, or negotiation with the state over uh, whether or not they will permit curb cuts. The state controls curb cuts, driveways into their road. We don't. And uh, they have superior authority. So, I mean, we can draw all the lines we want to on a piece of paper, but it doesn't say what the engineers going to look like and it doesn't say what the state will do uh, at the time it comes to actually design uh, the road. So, but in any case, he has to have access. Yes. Next up, the water surcharge controversy. Not completely based on 1980 consumption. As far as I, to the best of my knowledge, all residents is, uh, again, to the best of my knowledge, had to pay for all water restrictors that they put in their house to reduce their consumption. The consumption was cut in half, and then after the consumption was cut in half, you get hit with another surcharge. The reason that this came about is because of an extraordinary circumstance where the governor said, people in, our, in my state don't have enough water and I'm going to impose these restrictions. Now we can argue about whether it's our water or northern Jersey's water or southern Jersey's water, but in fact, if you're sitting in the governor's office, it's New Jersey's water. And you know, while I did not appreciate the fact that we were placed under restrictions when it wasn't necessary, in my opinion, uh, from the governor's, from a state perspective, it's the entire state, <coughs> and you have to recognize that. So it wasn't buying the water restrictors and the rest of it, because that's going to help you on a going forward basis. What is, what was the problem was the extraordinary effort that people made to conserve in response to the governor's order. Uh, mostly, I think, because they were afraid they were going to get slapped with big fines, because that was what put teeth in it. Uh, now, this particular um, surcharge has nothing to do with the number of people in the house. It has, it, it, it's simply taking the, the shortfall in the water utility produced by the extraordinary circumstances of the summer and spreading it among the customers of the water utility. Township Attorney Burt Bush brought the council up to date on current legal cases that the township is involved in. request last week. I won't do this every time, but you'll know, get my budget with the status report on all the litigation all the cases, but it's early. I'll take one minute just to tell the council, Mr. Hudak in particular. As to the status right now, I have 15 pending litigated matters for the township at the trial level, which means that we're still waiting for court dates on the basic cases, such as the White Castle suit that you authorized defense on tonight, or the Hearts Lane interest. Uh, the White Castle is the fast food restaurant case. There are 15 of those. We have one case pending at the Supreme Court of New Jersey, which is the Urban League case, with any day or any month or any year we might get a reply on. We have the Church of Religious Science on a separate issue where they sued the town when they bought the landlocked property. They lost at the trial level. That's at the appellate level. I mentioned Magley, so we have three on appeal. We have three separate tax matters on appeal. One I just mentioned was Church of Religious Science. One is Motel Dimensions, which had the property, uh, I'm drawing a blank now, with it. it's Talk of the Town Lounge, but it used to be Motel Dimensions, uh, Cloud Nine, it used to be. And there's a challenge to the director's ratio, which Mr. Bailey authorized to file. And I have 13 litigated matters on the self-insurance program, all of the personal injury claims when our police officers are involved or various other people, suits against people falling on potential property. Thank you.